What is going on guys? We are back with another video. So first things first, I wanna go ahead and um, just throw one little bead. Uh, I'm stick welding, obviously. I wanna throw one bead along these traction bars, the brackets, because I, when I put them on, you guys know I didn't have this prime weld uh, welder and I was using this uh, Hover Freight Flux 125. Doesn't get hot enough to uh, melt steel, obviously. I'm melting steel with this beast of a unit. I've been actually practicing um, with 7018, 6011, and 6013. And I'm getting pretty comfortable with stick welding. I actually like it um, quite a bit. Um, it's really fun to try to learn how to do it. And uh, obviously MIG welding is like some of the easiest welding you can do. Um, I'm not saying that stick welding's hard to do. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm learning how to do it. I actually uh, am working on the rear disc brake conversion kit. You can see I already have the road. This side's already done. Um, I just have to cut and flare the brake lines to make it work with this caliper. But I stick welded this bracket on here. Let's see if we can get it. Get a little view of it and see this bracket right here i i stick welded that on there and uh it came out pretty dang good it's not the best and this side is still the drum brakes so um in the next video you guys will see me um i wanted to do one side before the video just so i'm not like oh i don't know what to do and i want it to go smooth through the video so um you guys will see me do this side for the rear disc brake conversion kit i'm gonna go ahead and wire wheel this side because I did put some paint so it didn't rust. You can see this pitiful weld right here. I'm actually gonna turn the welder down just a tad bit so I don't get too much undercut. Try to control my bead a little bit better um, and where I'm placing all my heat so I don't get some undercut and blow through the frame. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go hop on the other side and do that traction bar bracket. And also, when you guys saw me um, make a pitiful weld, I maybe put down like three or four beads before this with some 6013. And uh, you guys saw me in last video repair this really thin metal. You know, it didn't come out the best. I grind grinded it down a ton to make it even look good. Um, that was one of the first things I did. And then I continued to practice on that. Uh, what is it quarter inch steel um, the brackets for the disc brake conversion kit are five eighths I want to say uh, so they're pretty thick and uh, I am running this on 220 volt now um, instead of the 110 so we got a little bit more juice for this baby still haven't gotten you know I, I have a full roll of uh, MIG wire just haven't used it yet because I wasn't able to get some uh, some gas quite yet. I gotta fill out applications and stuff like that because people wanna, or companies want to uh, rent out their bottles and they wanna make sure that they get their bottles back or get their money, so you gotta fill out applications and pay for the gas and stuff like that. I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace to try to find a used bottle that I can just take there and have them fill it up and not have to pay a monthly fee to rent a bottle. And uh, yeah, so we are running this on 220 volt now and it is working flawlessly. Absolutely love how it welds. I'm using 7018. Um, 7018 is probably my favorite rod. I've used almost probably a pound of rods so far, um, just practicing and um, I'm getting pretty good at it. And yes, guys, I do have my batteries unplugged. I do have, I unplugged my Quadzilla from the box itself too. Just so any current that's going through the frame, through the truck, from the welding isn't gonna mess up anything electrical with the batteries and stuff like that. So everything's unplugged. Let's go ahead and do this thing.
I'll knock that slag off and see how it looks. Like I said, I'm not the best. like that good to go <laughs> that Krylon baby it shouldn't come off while I'm driving if it was to come off while I was driving basically I'm I'm going forward like this well the two traction bars would drop down and if I hit something the back end of my truck I'm driving boom I would do a flip so that's the reason why I wanted a weld dot a little bit better I don't plan on it ever breaking off um, it's on there and uh, we're good to go. The overall first impressions with the stick welding on this machine, it does MIG, TIG, and stick. Haven't gotten the bottle for MIG or the 100% argon for uh, TIG yet, so I haven't practiced with that. But this prime welder doing its job, melting some metal together, and I like it a lot. I plan on doing a lot more welding, uh, probably a lot more MIG welding once I get the bottle. Um, instead of stick welding. I know how to MIG weld a lot better than stick welding, but um, With the transmission, I know it's been a couple weeks since I talked about the NV4500 swap I just talked to the guy earlier this week and I talked to him this morning So he is getting ready to buy that truck if you guys missed last video I'm going to be NV4500 swapping this Cummins right here this 47 RE is gonna get taken out of here get rid of it and we're going and we are going to NV4500 swap it. And I don't think I talked about this in the last video, but it's coming it's coming off of a four-wheel drive truck. So I'm going to have the transfer case with it. So he's not going to be using the axle either off of his truck or the other truck that he's buying, the one that I'm getting the 5 speed from. He's not going to be using one of the axles. So what I want to do is get the axle as well i'm gonna have the transfer case so i might as well just get an axle i'm gonna gut this thing the whole front end is gonna get gutted and i think the easiest thing to do instead of you know getting another truck with the shock pedestal and the coils pedestal i think the easiest thing to do is to get some coilovers you can make coilover towers so easy um it would be a lot easier to do that than uh, just use the regular, you know, coil and shock setup. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm super excited. I'm just waiting on the transmission. To, I'm, I'm just waiting for him to buy that truck because he has to do a couple more things for that guy that he's buying it from. Um, so I can get the dang NV4500. But, like I said in the last video, I'm going to take you guys over to Iron 8 Coatings and Fab or Panhandle performance and powder coating I think that's what their new name is they have a new name uh, panhandle perform panhandle performance and powder coating I think that's what it is um, I'm gonna take you guys over there and chase is gonna you know roughly explain how to do an mv4500 swap because I've never done it before and um, he's done a ton of them before so he's gonna know every little trick to um, putting that MV4500 in. So without further ado, let's go head over to Panhandle Performance and Powder Coating or Iron Ape, Iron Ape Coatings and Fab. Let's go talk to Chase. All right guys, unfortunately Chase was not at the shop last night. He had an emergency. I guess one of his buddies crashed their plane into the hangar or something like that. I don't know, but he wasn't there at the shop. So I guess for today's video, we are gonna be installing the rear disc brake conversion kit. God damn, that car sounds freaking horrible. <laughs> Anyway, we are installing the rear disc brake conversion kit from Lugnut 4x4. Now, as you guys saw earlier, I did install this side already. I'm going to give you a full explanation of how to install um, this side right here. So basically, what you got right here is obviously the caliper that goes over the rotor. The rotor mounts to the back side of the hub. It doesn't slide over the hub. 
just like on the front you guys know regular brakes the rotor slide oh my gosh my rotor is so rusty i haven't used it in a while or driven this truck in a while on the front the rotor slides over the hub on this style it doesn't slide over the hub it goes behind the hub so what you're gonna have to do with this kit i'll leave everything in the description below if you guys want to go check this out lug nut 4x4 they make um rear disc brake conversion kits for all sorts of axles i'm using the one for the dana 70. so what you want to do before you start taking everything apart look at the directions because um when i got this kit from sean over at lug nut 4x4 they weren't including the longer studs for like a dodge in their kit they are doing it now so if you guys do order a kit it most likely will come with the longer studs you're gonna have to put longer studs in your hub to account for mounting this rotor on the back side and with the bigger studs or the longer studs they don't quite fit in this rotor because this rotor is actually for it says right here 1985 chevy k30 um so these studs aren't really going to fit in here so in the directions it says if you're installing it on a dodge get the longer studs and then you may have to drill an 11 16th hole into the rotor so it's barely bigger than what the hole originally is so you're not taking off a lot of material but i went ahead and drilled uh, my rotors so they can fit the brand new studs these studs are going to fit in here um, perfect and then they'll be able to grip into the hub with those splines right there so it fits perfectly it's going to go the other way but yeah, you're gonna have to drill and you're gonna have to get the bigger studs. They probably will come with a kit. Um, he let me know that they started including them a couple months ago. Um, when, I got this, when I got this kit, they didn't come with it. So he went ahead and sent me some over. And yeah, so this kit is fairly simple. I really didn't even use the directions to install this. On the other side, I do have to, like I mentioned, do the brake lines because I have to get a cut and flare kit um, and then I have to figure something out with the emergency brake because these are the emergency brake calipers and uh, I don't know how it's going to be set up. I have it ran but it's not really uh, working properly so I have to figure something out with that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take off everything. We're going to go ahead and completely remove the whole drum brake kit. This is from the passenger side. And uh, yeah, you don't need it anymore because you're doing a rear disc brake conversion kit. So let's get it. So as you can see the difference between the two, they are a tiny bit longer. The brand new ones are a tiny bit longer than the old ones. And then the serrations on the shaft or on the uh, stud itself are farther towards the threads so that when you go ahead and <clears throat> stick the rotor on the backside, these uh, will grip into the hub. All right, now that we have everything taken off that we don't need, there's one more thing that we have to take off and it is this old bracket right here. Because when we go ahead and weld this bracket on right there, we're gonna need to be able to get to the backside and this bracket's gonna be in the way. And we don't need it anymore since we're not using the drum brakes. Now, like I just said, this is a weld on kit. There's other kits for other axles and other trucks on lug nut 4x4 that can attach to this old bracket. They're still in the works of making 
this kit that I have, a non-weldable kit, so you can actually mount it to this bracket. Um, but for right now, they only have the weld-on kit, so we're just gonna go ahead and weld it on. We already have the rotor and hub already attached with the lug nuts, so we are good to go there. On the passenger side, I had a little bit of trouble trying to get this bracket off. I'm not too sure how it was attached. Um, so what I did was I ran the angle grinder on the back side of this bracket all the way around put a slit and this section right here was able to pop off and then I was able to weld that bracket on. So I'm gonna do the same thing, get the angle grinder cut along the back side of this part of the bracket right there, all the way around, put some slits in the sides just so I can get this whole thing off and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I have this roughly mounted up right now. Nothing is set in stone yet. I don't even have the axle nut in there. But basically, what you wanna do is get your rotor on the back side of your hub, slide that on. You really wanna put the axle nut on as well and tighten it up all the way just so you know that's where the hub and rotor is sitting because if you don't put that in, it could bounce back and forth and not be in the specific spot because when you weld that bracket, you need to make sure that your bracket is, um, I believe it's three quarters of an inch from your rotor. And I measured that on the other side, it was perfect. View of what it's gonna look like. You wanna make sure that you get the, the calipers on the right side and the bleeder valve up at the top. Doesn't matter which way you're facing it really. Um, just make sure that, or it doesn't matter what position you have it in, just make sure that bleeder valve is on the top side and I'm gonna mount it the same way I mounted that other side, right in the middle on the side. So I just need to make sure I get my measurements right, and then I'll go ahead and tack it in. I will take everything off except for, obviously, the bracket. I'll take the rotor off, the uh, caliper off, and then I'll go ahead and fully weld that bracket on there, and then throw everything back on, and um, we'll be good to go. So right now, I have the flux core welder out. I'm just gonna tack it in place take everything off and then I'll fully weld it with my prime weld uh, multi-process welder. I'm going to stick weld it because I don't have any shielding gas to MIG weld it. Um, I stick welded it on the other side and it came out pretty dang good. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'll probably just tack this on the top and the bottom. I'll take the rotor off, take the caliper off, and then we'll fully weld it. thing don't got enough juice to weld it good and so I'm not using this flux core welder um, to mount these brakes <laughs> I'm not relying on it to uh, uh, I'm not relying on it for my stopping power for this truck I'm running this uh, it's pretty thick steel that's 5 8 and then the axle shaft is like a half an inch thick. So I'm running uh, 115 amps, some 7018. I'm gonna go up and around and uh, we'll see how this turns out.
Alrighty guys, it is the next day. I gave that bracket some time to cool down. I put a couple coats of matte black paint on it. Everything should be good to go. I got a little bit of rust on the axle shaft already, but it's good. This thing is not going anywhere. We are ready to uh, put everything back together. So let's go ahead and do that. It should be fairly simple. All right guys, so here is basically the final product. The only thing I'm not gonna do today is the brake line because on the other side, I haven't done it yet. I have to get a double flare kit to do the other side. Driver side is a little bit easier because the brake lines coming from the front of the truck go to a T to the back. And the T is literally right here for this braided brake line. I just have to get a um, male to male connector to fit into this to go right into that T. So we'll be able to use that and get rid of this brake line the other side. You're gonna have to cut this one down, reflare it, and then just connect it in here. And then you can see the way that this fitting is. Um, it comes with a little tiny bracket you weld onto the axle, and this slips onto here, and then it has a clip that keeps it in place. Um, we're not gonna be using that on this side. We'll do that on the other side, um, because this one can just go right up into there. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Um, there is the final product. We got the caliper on, we got the bracket on. We have the emergency brake hooked up. So the way that the emergency brake is, is basically just like normal. You go ahead and push down the emergency brake. And that cable is connected to a bracket with a spring. So when that emergency brake pedal is pressed, the cable pulls, pulls this bracket right here. And this bracket tightens up the piston in the caliper, thus making it so that your wheel can't move and then obviously when you go ahead and release the parking brake that spring on there makes it so it returns back to normal this side worked out a lot better um, i wasn't too sure about on this side i think i might have messed it up a little bit but um, i do have it connected i'm just not sure how it works um, how it's going to work quite just yet i'll have to mess with that when i uh, mess with the brakes because if I'm going to MV4500 swap this truck, I need to make sure that I have a good parking brake so I don't roll away. I can always put it in gear, but um, it's always good to put it the emergency brake on as well. Nothing left to do except to put the tire back on, the wheel and tire back on, and then I bought these lug nuts a long time ago. This haven't been able to, I just haven't put them on yet. So we got some black lug nuts that will look better than the stock. Um, silver ones, so we'll go ahead and throw these on and we'll get that tire back on.
All right, guys, that is finished. Putting all my tools away, I organized everything. Man, everything was a freaking mess. The truck wasn't so much of a mess. I just had all the tools that I used for this project sitting in here. It's all cleaned up. Uh, and uh, this toolbox cleaned up. My other toolbox is cleaned up. But big shout out to Lugnut 4x4. Sean over at Lugnut 4x4 hooked it up with this rear disc brake conversion kit. Could not be more happy how it turned out. You guys really didn't see this side. So I'll give you guys a little look real quick. Same as the other side, um, emergency brake with the spring right there. I have to um, adjust that a little bit. I'm not sure if it's working or not. Um, do have to do the brake line as you can see. I just have it like that so no brake fluid is leaking out. Um, this will have to get cut down, reflared, and then attached to this steel braided brake line. Um, the bracket's welded on. I didn't paint the side, which I probably should. Um, I'll just mask everything off and just paint it real quick. But that side is done. This side is done. Fairly simple to do if you have basic knowledge on how things work. I mean, it doesn't really take a lot to know how to do this. Um, like I said before, this is a weld on kit, so you will need a welder if you're gonna get it for your second gen. But also, like I mentioned, they have other kits for other types of axles where you can actually just mount it straight to the original bracket that came off the drum brake. So we got these drum brakes taken off and a rear disc brake conversion kit put on. Um, as far as I know, let me know if I'm wrong or not, but I think the only second gens that came with rear disc, um, Caleb Paradox, he had rear disc on his sport second gen. So I think they only came on sport. Correct me if I'm wrong, but now we have disc in the front and disc in the back. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Go check out Lugnut 4x4 if you wanna do this conversion for yourself. Um, I'll leave a link down below. Um, if you're doing this for a Dodge, remember you gotta drill out the rotors, um, 11 16 um, in the rotors, and then you have to get the longer studs, but I think those longer studs actually come in the kits now. So just be sure if you're buying it, make sure it comes with the studs or you'll have to wait for those studs to come in yeah, like I did. So. There it is guys, the second gen is coming together. I should be getting that MV4500 here soon, so hopefully we'll be able to start making content on that and actually start driving this truck because I've had this thing for over a year now and I've maybe driven um, 15 miles, 20 miles in this truck so far. So I'm ready to get a new transmission, a manual transmission. Uh, that's one thing I'm looking forward to the most with this thing. Uh, my car is manual, I like driving manuals and uh, I want this thing to be manual as well. And we'll be able to rip that. Uh, I got custom tunes. If you guys didn't know, I have custom tunes on my Quadzilla and I haven't even been able to check them out. Dude. I got uh, tow, eco mode, daily, smoke. I got a smoke tune. I have, um, I'm not sure what sicko mode is, but it's called sicko mode. And then I have a race tune. So I have like five or six tunes that I'm dying to try out and see uh, what kind of power this truck puts out. So if you guys like these types of videos on the second gen Cummins, definitely hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one. Dippin' Diesel, out.